When I was preparing for college and my sister Mia had just started high school, our parents' restaurant went bankrupt and our family ended up with no money. Our life fell apart and I hit a rough patch. Hi, I'm Polly and this is my story. You probably know that when it rains, it pours. My parents informed us that we would have to move from our big house to a small apartment to help pay off our family's debts. Dad managed to buy an old van with the money he'd saved, and he turned it into a diner on wheels. Only, that didn't end well for me. After all, my parents couldn't afford to hire anyone, which meant that they were counting on my help. We'll all have to take turns working at the diner to make ends meet. Of course except Mia, because she needs to study. I have to pass exams to go to college though. I can't work either. By the way that mom looked away, I realized that there was more bad news to come. It turned out that the money that had been set aside for my college was being used to pay for Mia's expensive private schooling. I felt like I was the only one in the family suffering. For Mia, life hadn't changed at all. Our parents worked seven days a week and Mia went to school every day looking excited. So I decided I wouldn't be selfish and I would help my family. Instead of going to college, I started working in our diner on wheels. My life changed completely. Cooking and selling hamburgers and french fries was terribly boring. So to make things a little more interesting, I started to watch video lessons about hot cuisine and I cooked delicious dishes over my breaks. However, my parents didn't like my new hobby. Stop wasting the products that we're buying for the diner. We're barely making ends meet as it is. Damn it, almost everything I liked was being taken away from me. But my problems didn't end there. Soon, all my school friends left for college. My boyfriend, Harry, also went to study in another city. And he said before leaving that long distance relationships just weren't for him. I was terribly sad. I was left with no friends and none of my favorite hobbies. The only thing that could cheer me up was the fast food that we were selling. After years of this lifestyle, I gained a decent amount of weight. But so what? The diner on wheels was doing great. And soon it turned into a whole chain. My family and I were able to move back into a big, beautiful house. But I kept on working because I had no other hobbies besides food. Mia had grown up and become a real school queen. Everyone admired her figure and couldn't believe we were sisters. How could such a beautiful girl have a sister like that? The taunts of strangers didn't bother me much though. However, it really hurt my feelings to hear the mocking words of my sister that I'd sacrificed so much for. It's honestly a wonder that she hasn't eaten me yet. <laughs> that was going way too far. One day, our parents opened another diner and invited us to an amusement park to celebrate it. It was a good idea, but I had to listen to Mia talk about herself the whole evening. I get to be class president soon. After all, nobody can compare to me. And we also have a young student teacher at our school. He's so cute. At the end of the evening, dad suggested we go on a ride designed for four people. My parents and my sister calmly walked into the cabin, but the operator didn't want to let me through. I'm sorry, there is a wait limit for this attraction. I didn't get upset though. I knew I could just eat a hot dog while my family was on the ride. But dad solved the issue by giving the operator a discount coupon for the diner. And so I joined my family. Mia was terribly afraid of heights. So for 15 minutes, I enjoyed the view of the city in complete silence. However, when it came time to get out of the cabin, something truly embarrassing happened to me. I got stuck in the stupid narrow chair. Dad and the park worker pulled me by the hands, but nothing seemed to help. They had to call a technician to come and loosen the restraints. I wanted to sink through the floor when everyone in the queue for the ride started laughing and taking pictures of me. The worst part was when Mia joined in and took a selfie with me. I think I'll caption it. Someone's been eating too much. When I was finally free, I ran away from that humiliation and I hid in the emptiest parts of the park so I wouldn't have to hear those taunts anymore. Hey, hey, who's crying there? There, there. I looked up and I saw a guy in a clown costume next to me. This was just what I needed. He pulled a handkerchief out of his sleeve and handed it to me. I grabbed it and an endless string of multicolored scarves started to come out of his sleeve. <laughs> I couldn't help but laugh and I told the kind clown that I had no friends and I was constantly bullied because of my weight. The clown made a flower out of balloons for me and he said I'd be fine. The important thing was not to despair and that was nice of him, but his smile was painted on. 
So I decided to do something that would really cheer me up. Take revenge on Mia. In the morning, I went to her school. I often met Mia after classes, so the security guards recognized me and let me in. I quickly snuck into the teacher's room and I rigged the results of the election so Mia would lose. <laughs> That's more like it. This will definitely teach you a lesson, sis. All that was left to do was to leave unnoticed, and so I ran out of the office. Unfortunately, I pushed the door so hard that I hit some guy. Imagine my surprise when I realized that I had knocked down my ex-boyfriend Harry. During the time that we hadn't seen each other, he had grown even more handsome. Meanwhile, I looked, so I was glad that he didn't recognize me. I wondered what he was doing there. Watch where you're going. The bell rang and the students noisily poured out into the hallways. Mia and her classmates clung to Harry from all sides and addressed him as a teacher. Huh, so he was the young teacher that Mia had been talking about. What a twist. I came back home in high spirits because something good had finally happened to me again. Since Harry was back in town, we could date again. Only first I needed to lose a lot of weight. I absolutely couldn't let Harry see me before that. I took my mission seriously. I adopted a strict diet that same day. Instead of pizza and chips, I would eat only fruits and vegetables. Polly, are you sick? We're having dinner, but you've barely touched your food. I told her that as soon as I lost weight, I would be dating Harry again. Mia couldn't resist making a sarcastic comment when she heard that. <laughs> you wouldn't last a week on such a strict diet. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. The next day, Mia came back from school angry and upset because she had lost the election. And to cheer herself up, my sister decided to ruin my mood. Mia saw how hard it was for me to follow the diet, but she still brought home fast food from our diner, and she started to devour it in front of my eyes while I was failing to enjoy an apple. <sighs> Put it away. It's hard enough for me as it is. <laughs> Sounds like a you problem. You're gonna snap soon anyway. Might as well happen now. I got so angry at my sister, and I told her that she had lost her election thanks to me. You always get lucky. So how about you feel what it's like to be a loser for once in your life? We argued until our parents came home, and then we locked ourselves in our rooms. I wasn't ashamed at all, though. Mia had never been denied anything in her entire life. <sighs> Someone had to put her in her place. Although it wasn't easy, I lasted on the diet for two weeks. Finally, I decided to weigh myself and see the results. But the thing was, <gasps> impossible. I gained even more weight. I was gonna start crying, but suddenly I felt Mia's hand on my shoulder. Oh, don't give up, Polly. It's just that a diet alone isn't enough. And Mia suggested running together in the mornings. I hadn't expected her to support me like this, and I felt really happy. So the very next morning, we went for a run in the park. Mia floated along like a butterfly, but every movement was hard for me. I even fell into a puddle once. And then the most terrible thing possible happened. Harry was at the park. Mia greeted him happily and thanked him for telling her about the benefits of morning running. My fat sister and I also wanted to follow your example. Harry stared at me, this time definitely recognized me. Polly, it can't be. What happened to you? And that's when it dawned on me that Mia's support was fake. She had taken me for a run so that Harry would see me. If it hadn't been for Harry being there, I would have pounced on her. Let's have dinner this weekend and catch up. Even though Mia had set me up, everything had turned out pretty well. Harry asked me out on a date. Maybe I shouldn't have worried about the diet so much. I bought a new dress of Harry's favorite color for the dinner. And on the evening of the date, I spent two hours making my hair and putting on my makeup. Now I just have to put on the dress and I'll be ready. I felt that something was wrong at once. I couldn't zip up the dress. And then I actually heard it rip while I was wearing it. Was I still gaining weight? I decided I was not gonna let it ruin my evening. And I went to the date in ordinary clothes, but things didn't go according to plan. Harry, I'm so glad you're back. We can start dating again. 
Yeah, I'm glad to see you too, but you don't actually think I'm gonna date someone like you, right? Someone like me? <laughs> I was such an idiot. Harry had invited me just so he could brag about his achievements and tell stories from college. I shouldn't have daydreamed so much. I was so hurt that I left the dinner and I ran into the street in tears. I was crying on an empty bus stop when some guy came up to me. Why are you crying all the time? <laughs> I didn't want to talk to some weirdo on top of everything else. I told the guy that he must have mistaken me for someone else because we didn't know each other. We met in the amusement park. I was in a clown costume, remember? My name is Jim. Hmm. Well, he was surprisingly cute when he wasn't dressed like a clown. Jim and I got to talking while we were waiting for the bus. He turned out to be not only a funny clown, but also a pretty nice guy. Everyone has their own vocation. Mine, for example, is making people laugh. Once you find your own, you'll stop crying because of people who aren't even worth your tears. I smiled, and feeling grateful for his support, I said Jim should come to our diner sometime. I came home terribly hungry. I found the most unhealthiest foods I could, and I started eating them in front of Mia. That's what she wanted, right? So I thought that she would gloat and be happy about it. What happened to your diet? You were trying so hard. No matter what I do, I keep gaining weight. So what's the point? I'll just eat whatever I want. But Mia guiltily lowered her eyes and said that that was because of her. I'm sorry, Polly. I ate junk food in front of you on purpose. I broke the scales so they would add seven pounds to the weight they showed. And then I also changed the dress to one a few sizes smaller so you would think that you were having no results. Anyway, I was a really terrible sister and I didn't realize how much you had sacrificed for me. So that's the reason? She was my sister though. I couldn't stay angry with her forever. So I asked for her forgiveness as well. We hugged and we promised to support each other from then on. Now that Mia had told me the truth, I wanted to stick to the diet again, even though giving up delicious food was incredibly hard. One evening, when the diner was closing, I saw a big balloon at the window and I immediately realized it was Jim. Boo, how are you doing, Polly? Will you treat a clown to something delicious? Oh, I'm so glad to see you, but it's actually closing time. We're pretty much out of food. He shrugged and said he'd come back another time, but how could I let him go hungry? Every time we'd met, he had been so kind, and he helped me smile through my tears. Uh, don't go anywhere, actually. I'll think of something. I had to experiment a little, but I still managed to create a real culinary masterpiece from just some simple products. Still, I hadn't watched those video lessons for nothing. Jim tried it and shouted enthusiastically, Polly, this is amazing. Trust me, this is your calling. And that's when I realized Jim was right. Cooking brought me joy, and I'd always hated that healthy foods for diets were always so boring and tasteless. So, with Jim's support, I developed an amazing menu for losing weight. And now, I didn't have to choose between eating tasty food and healthy food. I decided that my experience could be useful for a lot of people, and I started to post my cooking tutorials myself. That turned out to be a great idea. My channel became really popular. Polly. We shouldn't have forbidden you from cooking what you wanted. Instead of a new diner, we would like for you to open a healthy food restaurant. Would you be willing to become its head chef? For the first time in a long time, I finally felt like I was in the right place. A delicious and healthy diet quickly helped me get back into shape. And like all sisters, Mia and I sometimes fight. But now it's only about small things. And recently, they had an open lesson at her school and discuss the topic of someone I'm proud of. Mia invited me to speak in front of her classmates and tell my story. I was really happy. I ran into Harry by chance that same day. His eyes were shining with delight. Polly, you changed so much. What do you think about dinner on Friday? Mm, sorry, Harry, I can't. I'm going on a date with Jim that day. Everyone can lose their way. If you're lucky, you'll have a loyal friend and an understanding family that will stay by you during the hard times. Have you ever treated your siblings unfairly? Tell us in the comments down below.